The five zone kitchen. Yeah, that's all I got. Let's do this. Alrighty, a little recap. Last week we discussed the three zone kitchen. This breaks our kitchens up into three main working areas, the sink, the range, and the fridge. However, our spaces are changing, so it's out with the three zone kitchen, in with the new five zone approach, and that's what we're gonna discuss today. So why doesn't the three zone approach work anymore? Well, that's not actually the case. It still works great for many of us working or renovating older homes where our kitchen is confined by space or walls or doors, and we don't have the option to throw a big kitchen island in there or we don't have an open concept living area. But as homes change, open concept becomes a bigger thing, connected rooms are becoming even more prevalent, so does our approach to design. And that's where the five zone approach comes in. So what exactly do we want out of our kitchens today? Is it any different than 20 years ago, 50 years ago, maybe even 100 years ago? Well, I can't speak for everybody, but based on what our clients have told us, they want a kitchen that caters more to our modern needs. It's not just for cooking anymore. It's a space we entertain. It's a place we eat. It's even a space where our kids can sit and do their homework. I mean, you name it, we have probably done it in our kitchens. So what exactly are the five kitchen zones? Well, it takes the basic three zone approach and just splits it up a little bit more. We have cleaning, cooking, food preparation, non-consumables, and consumables. And just like the three zone approach, planning the five zone kitchen is all about placing and storing items in the most practical and relevant manner. So let's start with the cooking zone. It is planned around a standalone range or a cooktop and wall ovens. Now, even if these two items are separated, it's still important to think about what we're gonna need at each of these spaces. You'll likely want all of your pots and pans near your range or cooktop. And you're gonna want your cookware like Pyrex dishes or casserole dishes, your baking sheets, your muffin tins, located somewhere near your oven. If you're like me, you might even want to carve out a small area for cooking utensils and spices so that they're easily accessible and handy when you're working at your cooktop. Finally, you're also going to want to make sure this area or this zone is surrounded by enough countertop. You want space to take things in and out of the oven or while you're working at your range. The cleaning zone is pretty self-explanatory. You have your sink, your dishwasher, and a place for trash and recycling. However, you should also keep in mind that this zone is not only going to be used for cleaning. It's also your main access for water while you're working in your kitchen. So having it centrally located probably makes the most sense. Now many people and many designers like to think about the kitchen zone from a left to right orientation. Planning their garbage to the left, their sink in the center, and their dishwasher off to the right. However, like I said last week, I think it's important to think about which hand is dominant for you and plan in that direction. The preparation zone is all about countertop space and more storage. In an ideal world, we'd have roughly four feet of uninterrupted countertop space in this area. However, more is never a bad thing. You should also consider where exactly the preparation zone will sit within your kitchen. For my designs, I like to place it near the cooking or cleaning zones or on an open island. You may remember from past videos that I'm not the biggest fan of placing plumbing or appliances into the kitchen island because it can elevate costs without adding a ton of functionality. However, this is another reason I like to keep the kitchen island open. It gives a large, uninterrupted prep space. In addition, you can even work at that kitchen island now while watching TV or keeping an eye on the kids. The last thing to keep in mind with the preparation zone is storage. You'll want easy access for things like mixing bowls, knives, cutting boards, those cooking oils, and your spices. So typically, I find using base cabinets set up with drawers the most functional in terms of organizing the space. The consumable zone is where we store our food which more than likely consists of a fridge and some sort of pantry or cabinets. Now it's also a good practice to have an open section of countertop or a table nearby for dropping grocery bags when we come back from shopping or pulling items out of the fridge and pantry and having an easy place to set them down. And last but not least, we have our non-consumable zone, which is primarily made up of storage for our cutlery, our dishware and our drinking glasses. It is also the one zone that is typically split between our wall cabinetry and our base cabinets. However, I find more and more people are moving their everyday dishware from those wall cabinets into base drawers for easier access and better organization. Now, interestingly enough, I actually think there is a sixth zone, one that hasn't been talked about or one that we haven't talked about, but I'm not gonna let you know what that is until the very end, so stay tuned. So with all that being said, what exactly are the beneficial traits of a modern five zone kitchen? 
Well, this layout is often centered around an open plan and the kitchen needs to be multifunctional to allow people to carry out different tasks at the same time while still hanging out together. For example, it's no longer rare to see laptops or phones or tablets being charged or hanging out on countertops in our kitchens, or even someone sitting on these devices while another person is cooking. Now, what you don't want to see is charging cables draped everywhere or spanning open spaces, becoming a trip hazard or just getting in the way. However, we can account for this in design by including charging stations in drawers and appropriately placed outlets at the island, so cords never really get in the way. We are also a lot more conscious nowadays of how our kitchens look when they're not in use. For better or worse, we want every little bit of extra storage to tuck and hide things away, keeping our kitchen as a pseudo showpiece. This does make sense. After all, you have spent tens of thousands of dollars on this dream kitchen renovation, you want to show it off. Even those of us who use our kitchens every day for cooking and baking still like to tidy up, put things away before guests come over, presenting a nice, clean, beautiful space. Now, once again, we can plan for this and work it into the kitchen design. For example, a butler's pantry can be a great addition if you have the space. This allows those small appliances to remain out on your countertop, easily accessible, but tucked away from the main area of the kitchen, or smaller kitchens can take advantage of appliance garages to accomplish much of the same. Finally, our kitchens are becoming a statement, almost a reflection of who we are as a person. And whether we mean to or not, current trends will almost always have an impact on our design decisions we make as a homeowner. However, we're also looking for more ways and unique ways in order to create a space that is truly our own. A high-end appliance, unique lighting, or a dramatic backsplash can all be used to create this standout feature in our kitchen. So what has worked in your space, or maybe not worked in your kitchen? Let me know down in the comments below. Alrighty, that sixth zone I promised you earlier, what is it? Well, I think the sixth zone should be an entertainment or social zone in our kitchens. The kitchen has become the hub of our homes, and we always seem to be congregating in here whether there is space dedicated or not. By creating a dedicated area for seating in our kitchen, whether it's at the island, maybe a window bench seat, or maybe even just a standard table, we can create a feeling of togetherness and hominess within our kitchens. Now, we all like to think of these kitchen zones as these neat and organized, separated spaces. I mean, it's our human nature, after all, to give everything a label and stick it in its dedicated box. However, the kitchen zones are going to mix together, they're going to intermingle, and they'll work for some of us and not work for others. And that's okay. The idea behind the kitchen zones is to give you a basic starting point for your design, so you can create a space that works for both you and your lifestyle. Thanks a ton for watching this week's video, and I'll see you next week. Oh! Next week's going to be a good one. A real good one. You're not going to want to miss it, so hit that subscribe button. We'll see you then.